for 40 years, I lived in a world that was a result of Vietnam, but I was out of touch with it. My wife wakes up one morning in a headlock. My words to her are, I'm going to dispatch you. No, go on, go. I was, uh, what they call a saw gunner, squad automatic weapon. Uh, so I was part of a, a small unit fire team, and we were doing sweeps through the city of Fallujah. It's not a function of intelligence, but it's a function of emotional trauma that's unresolved that bubbles up just like a volcano. And that's exactly what happened. So I popped. So basically, I, I lost both my knees, but my doctors were able to save my legs through various surgical techniques. My husband came home and said, I am dying. I only have 18 months to two years to live. I said, no, you're not going to die on my watch. We're going to have to figure out what ways we have to explore options. Although I'm not a techie, this little piece of equipment turned my life around. When I felt something different happen inside of me, when I felt coherence happen, when I felt balanced, when the anxiety of the PTSD, you know, syndrome, whatever you want to call it, was no longer present, I had a new reference point. We now see that you're in green, so that means you're in high coherence. Actually, for the first time in my life, I have known what it means to feel Joyful. I've never felt joyful before. We have to understand the purpose of our lives. And hard math gives you the, the start point to understand yourself first. The brain and the heart actually sends more information upstairs to the brain in our head than the other way around. The training portion, the second T, if you will, the technology, practice, use, apply, and experience something different worked, okay? The second part of it is you got to use that stuff. You got to apply it on a daily basis. I was given the opportunity to fly in a L 39 jet. These guys gave me the ride of my life, and I was like, man, what do I got to do to fly one of these things? In June of 2010, I got my sport pilot license. My uh, flight instructor let me go solo. So I go up and just fly the pattern. And I come back around, lower the flaps, and going down toward the runway. And it just doesn't feel right, and so I go around. And I go down for the second time. It just doesn't feel right again. And so I go around again. And you know, I noticed that after the second go around, you know, my Breathing had gotten a little bit quicker. You know, I was, I was really anxious. And I started, you know, started doing the heart focus breathing and, and telling myself that I could do this. And so I put the plane on the ground and I walked away. If they expect a silver bullet, if they think sitting down with an M-wave is going to change their PTSD, they don't understand what, the, what their situation is. They don't understand what they've created. It's time to assume full responsibility for yourself. That's not what most vets do. They indulge in pity parties. They indulge in blame. They feel as though they're victims. And I'm not saying that that's not accurate, but so what? What are you going to do with that? Are you going to wallow in it? Or are you going to pick it up and say, if I want my life to change, I'm going to have to change myself. And that's what I saw HeartMath doing is, HeartMath was giving me a venue that allowed me to change my life. The breath of life, the connection of the heart, and that relationship with the brain is what allow me to move from one morphic field, like in physics, they talk about that morphic field where I was just getting crap, to shift into a new 
field of energy where things all of a sudden were happening. And hard math was the beginning 